probably we can even start and then we can wait for others to join later. Yeah, definitely. So I'm curious, um, when did we, what was the previous month or time period we used for uh, Fedora Women's Day? Usually it, if, uh, it was September or October. Uh, because I think when we did as a month, it was September. When it was a week, it was October, something like that. But then we decided that it's better to have a month because it's easier for the organizers to pick a day. I agree with that. Um, what do we think about putting it in October just to give ourselves some more time? How about yeah, the range? How about a range from October to November, something like that? I think one month seems long enough. Yeah. So I would say because if we're we also need time to uh, get the, the feedbacks from the people and so on. So I think one month should be okay. Should we choose October? Yeah, I was thinking of October as well because there are many conferences in September. Uh, so probably October will be a bit better. And also something that we were considering previous years, it was when school would start, so students wouldn't have exams. And I remember that usually September was the time that they had exams, and October was a bit better. Okay. Uh, that's true, there is OpenSUSE in October, OpenSUSE and LibreOffice okay. Conference. But that can be because it's one month and that can be something that we can either like do something with them. Yeah, I think that the Fedora Women's Day, it wouldn't, from what I'm, my understanding is, it's like a two to three hour event, right? Yes. Right. Yes. So it wouldn't be like a whole conference and, and then we could invite people from like the Open Sousa conference to come. Uh, to our Fedora Women's Day as like a social thing, maybe. Yeah, definitely. All right, so I put in October. Uh, and Justin was is mentioning mid October is also Fedora thirty three release. So, so it's good for Fedora stuff. <laughs> it's a good time to do it, or is it? I think should make be okay. it, making it harder because we might want to be doing release parties. Yeah. And that's but, from like, that's, you know, me as a mind share yeah, rep, right? Um, bringing that point up. It's true. People are interested in Fedora around them. Um, because uh, we can, like people, what they can do is either uh, like maybe combining them both to a release party and Fedora Women's Day in one. So, sure. So we can celebrate the release party at the Fedora Women's Day. I do think there's something to be said about keeping them as separate events. And maybe this is just the uh, community, <laughs> the manager in me or something. But I like the idea of having a higher number of events. Mm -hmm. So like if we, you know, if us as Fedora community can say we've ran this many Fedora Women's Day, this many release parties. It's a little bit, it's a, a nicer story to tell about what we're doing. And I also think like it would be nice if we did the Fedora Women's Day and then the release party like one, like one after each other, right? So if, if the release party is already going to be happening in October, we could do a thing where it's like, Fedora Women's Day is the end of September, beginning of October, and we're getting um, uh, we're getting people interested. So we're basically being like, "Oh, we're doing this Fedora Women's Day. It's an introduction for um, <clears throat> women to get like, okay, a sense of our community, a feel, and they get to know people a little bit, and it's like, hey, come to these release parties. So it could be a nice Amita! Hey! Hi! Hello! How are you? Hi! So glad to see you on camera! <laughs> I'm okay, how are you? We are doing fine. Nice. Um, 
So I was thinking like the Fedora Women's Day could be a prep for, for the women that we're trying to bring in to get, you know, to feel more comfortable going to the release parties. So that's my, that's my thought if we did it either. I know we're like, oh, give us more time to do in September, but maybe we need to look at the scope of the work mm -hmm. to see if it's feasible for September. We are at the beginning of August. Justin. Hello. I'm still eating breakfast, but I'm here. <laughs> yes. So uh, I'm thinking that, I mean, there are many people who want to do the release party, right? Uh, but for Fedora Women's Day, this is the group who drives this particular event. So um, my idea is to focus on Fedora Women's Day first, and then we can think of the release party if there is any benefit for that. Because if we concentrate more on the release party, we might slip the Women Day event. Uh, I'm not sure now the team is bigger. So if we have the bandwidth to accommodate both the event, that will be great. But the first focus should be the Women's Day. That's my uh, opinion. Yeah, definitely. I think it was just a matter of timing. Like mm -hmm. we don't want it to compete with the release parties and the release of the new Fedora. And we also want to, you know, time it well so that it makes sense. So I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I'm not worried about release parties to talk about for this, but it's a matter of timing. <clears throat> so my thought was we just need to like understand the scope of the work to see if we could get it done before September. We could just say like the last two weeks of September are when the events can happen and somewhere around there. We can work with, with folks to do, you know, what they need to do. If we can um, choose the second half of September, I think can be better for us just because like for now, there are not many things that we need to do before, but for example, the resource pack that is needed for the organizers and some others, they will need some time. And I'm afraid that we need to rush a lot in case we do it for beginning of September. But if we say second half of September, I think that's doable for us. It's a little bit more time frame to uh, coordinate and everything. So uh, looking at the calendar, um, the weekend of like <clears throat> the 25th of September, maybe through the weekend of the 11th or like the, so basically putting three weekends on the calendar as options. So the, tw the period of the 26th through the 11th. Does that make sense? Yes. I'm just checking that uh, Justin was mentioning that maybe someone said that they need October. I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, Justin in the chat was mentioning that in case we can also, like if someone wants to do it in October, right? we can either include some days from October or we can say that is the one-off special case. Generally, we do it in one month, so we can specify that during this month we um, did these many Federal Women's Day or the release party across the globe. So that makes more impact um, in terms of statistics when we share it. But yeah, if there is a, any special exception uh, to do it in one of October, then we can consider that. Also, um, are we changing any pattern? I mean, obviously we will be doing it virtual, uh, but are we changing any major rules which we used to follow for, uh, for the Women's Day earlier? like um, getting the proposals and then approving them and so well the changes mostly it will be that now for example they will just need to submit their request but it's not that they will ask for budget so it's not a big i don't know uh it doesn't need a lot of efforts from our side to say plus one or no because basically they will just say that 
here is the agenda that we have, the dates and where it could be organized. Uh, so I think it's less work from this part, but mostly it's a bit more work on the global organizing team, uh, on having some clear metrics, on having ready the respect, uh, on making sure that uh, we would use Hopping, for example, as a platform for the organizers and all this. So I think now it's a bit more work on the global organizing in the beginning, uh, but on the local organizers, it's not that it needs from our side a lot of approval because it's just the date and we will speak there. Uh, and as we will be, uh, we were used to distribute the resource pack. Uh, I'm sure that that we can use still, but do we want to make some changes to it uh, considering the release, the new release? Uh, what do you guys think? I think it's good uh, uh, the dates that Maria was mentioning to do it like before the release parties, and then we can leave the time for release parties to happen. I think you were meaning like, should we update the resource pack with new info? That's right, right. On, on the new releases. Um, yeah. Justin, I think we have a ticket. Is this for updating? Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> Are we taking uh, the meeting notes somewhere? Do we have the agenda document? I think we have uh, yeah, the pinned in the it. chat. Okay, thank you so much. Just open. I, I was a bit late. I'm sorry for that. No worries. My baby suddenly needs pasta. And <laughs> I was asking her from uh, like from the one hour um, before the start time of this meeting, and she was not hungry. And apparently, exactly at the meeting time, she needs needed pasta. So, <laughs> can you imagine? Yes, I can imagine definitely. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I, I just miss in person vlog. I am um, eating. I re eating. I'm reading <laughs> this um, this ticket here. Mm -hmm. Um, just sorry to interrupt, but before that, so can we, so are we like set on having the duration from September 25th through October 11th? Yeah, I think that's a good date. Okay, and then we have, let's say, a week of buffer if someone wants to stretch it beyond that duration. We Is can. That uh, we can promote the dates that we have now, and in case the organizer says that they really need another date, we can be flexible, but we can promote the dates that we have on the document. All right. Okay. So I'm a, need, I'm a newbie. Uh, yes. Sir. What kind of, like, uh, just looking at the next item on the agenda, talking about the duration, just yeah. makes me wonder, like, what is a normal agenda or what normally happens at a Fedora Women's Day? Well, usually it starts, I mean, it depends. Usually we leave this up to the organizers, uh, but we try to suggest to have a general uh, presentation about Fedora as a community, uh, how people can be part of it and so on. And then usually they have presentation about women in open source, for example, uh, why we are organizing Fedora Women's Day, and then it's really up to the organizers what speakers they have. They can be a bit more technical, they can be more general, but usually, I mean, it's not that we uh, put any limit. And uh, also the duration, because it was also um, feedback that we got from the uh, participants last year. The duration is not really up to us, uh, because some of them were saying that they need a bit longer and so on, but it's really up to the organizers how many speakers they will find, um, how hands-on they want to do it or no, um, networking time, that, because usually in the end they also calculate some networking time with the attendees. Um, I think I might have a rough estimate as to the duration so like looking back at the previous feedback given for 2019, for 
okay so my fwd was two hours long and the feedback was that it's too long and i think there was an fwd at aurangabad i think amita took it if i'm not wrong and they said that they um they needed a little more time or maybe it was bhubaneswar somewhere so if amita you could tell us how long yours been so we could have a rough idea as to what's the best one so uh, we coordinated with the faculties earlier uh before the event day and we collected the expectation from the students that what they want how how they want and which topics they want to hear more about so uh we noted that down we worked on the slides and presentation so we started the coordination much earlier than the event date with the faculties of that college which we visited on the day of the event so that's why it went a little bit smoother uh and uh and the duration was like we reached there um, later in the morning 11ish 11 am and then we finished at like by 3 and 4 in the afternoon so what happens is when you start talking uh, you 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 prepared a slide deck of half an hour or 45 minutes but then the interaction happened St- uh, people start asking questions and uh that is the most important part i feel so we never try to you know uh, rush through the presentation which we have prepared in fact we um indulge more in the interaction part uh and sometimes we deviate from the slides uh, we have prepared we we don't go there in fact the conversation is going in some other direction so so we follow the path in that direction so that is how it went so i'm sorry it's not the exact answer <laughs> to the question no, no. you asked I, but this is so i think w- yeah i think so something that i took away from that is that if the event is interactive enough they won't feel it's long right, right? exactly exactly and which is also in the feedback that some events weren't as interactive as they should have been exactly. so that's why maybe they were feeling long right okay. so never try to finish the content you have prepared uh just try to go with the flow because you need to make that connection and bond with the audience so that they be, they feel connected and they feel confident enough about the event so yeah right. that what happened that was happened in the last bit of mistake mari are you, you on are you on mute was saying something come on you <laughs> do we have a link to the resource pack yes Yes, it, uh it is also at the agenda I think. Okay. Here it is. I see it like found it. Thanks guys. Yeah. All right, I just want to review this for a minute. But we should update it definitely. Because it's a bit old. I think I'll put it in the chat just in case. So for duration, we could just say that whatever duration you feel uh, is up to the local organizer, but be ready to keep it interactive. So I had an idea as part of the resource pack. Um, something we could add in there would be like example sessions. So uh, it could be anything from like you know social time to um, people giving. presentations about a specific topic um to uh maybe like some interactive games like i don't know if anyone here got to go to the bingo or the pub quiz but those were actually really fun um we could do like we could do like slide show karaoke like we could give people examples of things that they could do during the event and add that into the resource pack What do you guys think of that idea? Um I mean it depends on which where which part of the country you belongs to. I'm not sure how many people are aware of which games or I mean the well, kind well, of colleges like that in that resource we would be like here's yeah. how, here's how to do this. And their net specifically in india uh, the kind of colleges we were going they are very i mean what to say very small uh, 
villages or very small uh, remote areas uh, we used to go in where people have very less bandwidth you know and network is flaky so um it, the site is great for where the people have good bandwidth and they right. are used to of these games but i'm not sure if it works well here right well i mean i think the idea is to give inspiration and we could give inspiration that directly um would work for those for that crowd of people right mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you know what works what what do you think works well for that demographic we can totally include that into the it's like ideas it's not mm -hmm. that having them there means you have to do them it's more of a here's inspiration because i think that this is a new thing for people and they might have a hard time imagining like what am i going to do virtually for three hours right True. so this True. is inspiration for people they don't have to follow uh something particular so uh, yeah i'm curious what kind of examples like what do you think would be most well suited to the demographic you're working with mm -hmm. I'm curious if you have any ideas. Yeah, Pictionary I'm aware of, but I'm not sure how many call it. I, I mean, nowadays they are very advanced. I'm not sure if a Google uh, survey uh, in advance will help it at certain places to know what exactly they want. We heard it many times from the faculties, but uh, ex Asking directly from the students by sending them survey might be a good option as well. All right, so I'm actually going down to like, I don't know what point it is. It's under global organizing team responsibilities. I realize I just jumped ahead on the agenda. So I'm just putting that here, provide ideas and inspirations for what to do during virtual events. And then we can go back to the agenda. Sorry for. <laughs> All right. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the main question when we, uh, when Jonah and I were making this agenda was that when we talk about a global FWT organizing team, so are we saying that there's going to be one global event? And or is it going to be one global event where we, where we, coordinate with other open source communities, like how Justin is trying to get Genome on board? Or is it going to be that whatever I just said, plus we'll have local organizers doing their own mini watch, uh, uh, Fedora Women's Day virtually, like it has been happening. So because then if it's, if it's not the third option, then we don't have to take the headache of having, um, you know, calling for speakers for local events. So I want to put one um, point out here that Hopin is not hard to use or to set things up, but it definitely it takes time. Now, for Nest, obviously, it's like a three-day event with like 50-something sessions. Like, it won't be that. But um, I think what I would want to do is train a couple people on how to use it on the DNI, uh, like, you know, out of the organizers for Fedora Women's Day. So we can kind of share setting them up. If we do multiple events, we have to think about, okay, like, you know, we're going to have to set each one of these up. I don't think that we can actually, like, we'll outline all the information that we need from the organizer of the local event but we're still the ones I think we're going to need to navigate this system. And it's primarily going to be me. And once I train you guys, like hopefully, you know, it'll, so there is this workload that we have to think about. There is also, if we did it as one like long event, right? The thing we need to think about for that is that Hopin has a maximum of 72 hours for an event now you can you can do as many events right but each registration 
does have a cost. So that w that is like part of our budget, but it's not a high cost. It's like anywhere from like two to six dollars. I don't know exactly what ours will be. I will get back to you guys with that. But there's that cost to think about. So if we did do like, say we did a um, three hour, of, uh, uh, sorry, a three day event over one of the prime weekends. And we did sessions in that event for each one of the local Fedora Women's Day. And then if folks had ones outside of that three day event, we could just set up mini ones for just them um, and their local, you know, and if other people can join, obviously totally welcome, but we could try to reduce the amount of registrations by putting it in a three day period. That's That would be a cost efficiency option which is definitely something we should think about. <laughs> That's a very good point. I don't think of actually. Yeah. That, that should have been the first question before the duration part. <laughs> I believe I would be as well. But maybe we can do even something with the dates. I don't know. Because what I'm thinking of, if we make like the three days, uh, how we will also make it easier for people to find at which one they should uh, register and so on. Well, this is the thing. If it's a three-day event, they just have to register for the one event, right? And then there's a schedule and you can like, it's not, it's honestly not very intuitive. And this is some feedback I'm going to give Hopin but there is a button where you can add it to your calendar. So the idea would be like, you're not registering, you don't know, you don't have to worry about which one to register for. You register for the Fedora Women's Day, and then you go to the session that you want to go to. And we could also do things like we have here, like testing the audio video, hallway tracks, that kind of thing, yeah. so people can hang out in between. Mm -hmm. um, and we could do, you know, like, I mean, it could be spaced out, but I think it's really going to be dependent on the organizers and what they can do, right? And, oh, go ahead. No, sure. I mean, after you. Uh, just that it would be good. It's, it's actually nice that we're all kind of in different time zones, because I would say that we're probably not going to give admin access to local um organizers so yeah. someone probably does need to be like around for at least some of the time and have like a good way for people to communicate to us if there are issues luckily after using it for nest i don't foresee there is a cap on admin seats and hop in justin it so the other thing is once we get to our own account which i don't know if you guys know the story but like ospo is working on getting an account for ospo within red hat and uh, the contract ended up taking really long so we're working with the apache foundation on their account because of you know things going through procurement <laughs> so anyway <clears throat> once we have that other account it will be an account that we're sharing with OSPO. That being said, I, I can fully make them aware, okay, we're doing this Fedora Women's Day event and we'll have as many spots available um, as in the admin, um, admin slots available, right? So I think I need to see how OSPO manage their contract because adding additional sponsor seats does cost money and it adds money to each register registration. So that's kind of not a detail that I was involved in negotiating. So the minimum though is 10 at a time. The thing about sharing it with OSPO is there might be people with an OSPO who need to be having access to that, right? Um, and changing it is not as easy as turning on a button or flipping a button for us. We have to, um, be in touch with Hopin so that they can change the slots. So there is some amount of coordination behind the scenes for that. 
I did not try, I was not about to make this a hop in, how to hop in workshop yeah. right now. <laughs> Um, but it's good to know. It's good to know. When they will have an answer? Uh, when OSPO will have their account and so on? Uh, I'm hoping within the next couple of weeks. I mean, this is a process I was working on for a while, and we kind of thought it would be quick. It was not quick, very long. And I actually only got access to set, start setting things up and even figure out like how it works like three weeks ago. So, like, <laughs> The last week has been so intense getting uh, everything set up, but now I'm like, you know, on my way to expert. So well, it's good. <laughs> um, so anyway, looking back. It'll be good. Uh, it'll be nice to have admins uh, geographically distributed because then we don't want somebody to be awake in US while there is an event going on in uh, APEC region. Because right. you see the time zone, it's a day night difference. Right. I'm not sure in OSPO if we have anybody from APEC region. Oh, we need to we need to check that, and we need to coordinate with OSPO that uh, they they should make sure. Well, this is the thing. Concerned. So I want to get you got like so I want to train people here on this team to use it. I'm okay with. Like, I have trust, I know you guys, um, to use this platform. So I'm talking about uh, local organizers that are not us. <laughs> Someone having some major sound feedback. Not sure who it is. Okay, that's better. Okay, so, right. So I do want to train you guys. So, like, Amita, you are in the APAC region. You could be the contact. You could be the person who's in Hopin as an admin for that event, right? I'm in. Yes, yes, exactly. I'm in. You know, East Coast time. Yona's uh, probably Central Eastern or European yeah. summer time. Yeah, you to sleep first. So we're covering quite a few right now, and like Justin, obviously, we got B, we got Mirika, like we got plenty of us. So I think we could do something like this where we just jump on a call and we got time zone. Um, yeah, jump on a call and I can walk through a lot of the stuff with you. It's pretty intuitive. There's some parts that are not so intuitive, but I just, whatever. Hop in, we'll get there. It's actually a very new company. It's only like four or five months old or something like that. But I think feel like this is the best platform I've used so far. So for a virtual conference, what do you think? People yeah, it's it? very good. It's, it's working. I mean, it's very impressive. I see the polls and booths and social and everything. It's impressive. Maybe for my next virtual, I mean, for the QE one which got canceled the open test one. Maybe I'll try something similar or maybe this one. So doing a three day event with sessions for different time zones. And so if, also uh, the so option, if, from option one and option two. Uh, What do people think about that? I think the first one should be. Well, I was thinking we could do both. Like this is the option for people to be a part of. Like you have this option or you have that option. Oh, sorry, if I interrupted somebody. Yeah, you had to say something. Option, sorry. So for the second option, uh, I don't think it, it's even needed to have this thing that you can that you have to do it on Hopkins. If let's say they're not able to participate in a three day event, then local organizers just could set up their own, I don't know, maybe Google Meet or whatever platform they prefer. I mean, it's flexible on everyone's side then. Let's say for some reason they couldn't 
get themselves to organize it in that three day slot that we gave them because right now we were opting for maybe a week or two weeks of duration for some reason if it doesn't happen then they can always go with whatever platform they want yeah i think that's good your that voice is and it reduces um i i could not get properly what what she's just said oh, okay sorry sorry so i said that uh, if we opt for option two as an alternative, then the local organizers don't need Hopins as a platform. They can always go for their own preferred platform, maybe a Zoom call or Google Meet, and conduct it at their own leisure or whenever it is suitable for them. Yeah. Uh, only one thing that uh, we were speaking also today at up session, it was that it might be a bit easier to use Hopin to know how many people will get and uh, follow up with them. Because this was something that we were lacking of previously, like we couldn't, uh, like here we can use the polls, for example, and so on. But previously it was very hard to know how many people uh, attended. That's a really good point, Yana. Also, it's recorded here just automatically if you set it up that way um so that's another good point yeah i'm torn but you know some people might just want to do their own thing like justin mentioned in the comments um you know some people prefer to organize things their own way so I think, like, I this is my feeling. Say we can do 20 Fedora Women's Days, sessions or events or however we want to look at it. I think we could get at least half of them to say, land on that weekend. Right? I mean, like, where's where are people going? What are people doing right now? I don't know. Crying in the corner. Like, <laughs> I mean... Honestly, it's in uh, September, whatever. We'll choose a weekend, I guess. But I mean, people really aren't going that far. And if we've chosen um, the weekend in advance, we can properly advertise what's happening and get, you know, so people aren't making plans for that weekend. <laughs> plans. I don't know what plans are anymore, but yeah. So I had a question. In this three-day event, will we also target at having that collaboration with Genome? Or is that going to be a separate event later? Yeah, actually, this was something that when we had uh, coordination with uh, Nyarika and Nasir, I think uh, we were thinking that maybe a part of local ones, we can have even one global that we can uh, organize it in collaboration with other communities, like Gnome is one of them. But maybe we can ask even others, like, I don't know, LibreOffice, OpenSUSE, and others. I think they would be very open to um, to work on it and to do something together. Because something that we were thinking, maybe even Justin, I, I'm not sure if he can uh, join, is that I'm not sure like how exactly would be the collaboration with GNOME, if they will collaborate like in local ones, but that depends like how many local ones it will be and so on or it will make more sense to have like one global one okay so in that yes just make, suggesting linux women's day <laughs> maybe next year in person <laughs> uh i just made some notes on the on the agenda, options for local organizers? Uh, for me, it will be great to have uh, the speakers from other uh, communities and countries because uh, Niharika can, uh, you know, can give her feedback on this. But students here are very fascinated by by the speakers from other countries and uh, they get <laughs> impressed when uh, pe uh, people like just, I, I talk a lot, I always talk about Justin 
whenever I go to any event, I show his picture, I tell his age, I tell what whatever he does. So they, this impress them a lot. So it'll be great if we we get such speakers and uh, they they get inspired. They listen to these stories. People connect to the stories more than the than anything else. So yes, it's a brilliant idea to have all the sessions. Uh, do we think we could move on to the next agenda point? Yeah. yeah. yeah just wanted to add that uh, because Regina asked if this is the first time there is a collaboration. Actually, even previously, maybe not officially, but we organized the Federal Women's Day in Munich. And it was together with uh, Marina that was representing LibreOffice and Open So no, it was like a collaboration with them. In that I, so I had a hard time hearing you. Sorry, Amita, I muted you momentarily. But can you say that again, Yona? Uh, I was saying that uh, previously, uh, B did uh, Federal Women's Day in Munich. And it was together with Marina. Uh, he represented Susa and LibreOffice community. Like this was kind of a collaboration that we did, but uh, it was like just in the small scale, let's say in a small, in one of the federal women's days that we organized. Yeah, and but, I just want to say we also had one another speaker with uh, from the Mozilla as well oh, yeah. from Berlin. So it was like a collaboration between all three different things so it was not just about like joining the fedora community as like as a contributor but like overall about the open source one but i didn't really so i just reached out to them like because they were in my network before i didn't really like talk to the communities about having a whole plan on how to collaborate yeah. I think we can do it. We can um, ask uh, the other local Yeah. Everyone muted My you. <laughs> I like that idea, Justin. No, no, you are unmuted. So, right now. But I think okay. I might muted you. I. Marie, you muted me? I did because there's people, there's a lot of noise <laughs> in the background. And I said that I did. Um, but you never told me that when you're going to unmute me. OK, just a one quick uh, suggestion. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's OK. One quick suggestion that about uh, what we just said, uh, because she was connected already. They, uh, somebody was on her network. That, that's how we, she was able to pull in that speaker in the federal women's day can we send these emails asking that if if somebody knows already uh, people from uh, other communities in federal circle so they can we um, and they can help us invite them in this federal women's day to deliver a session like from gnome we already have the connections other communities some other open source communities <laughs> I can invite people from LibreOffice community as well. And I'm sure that they, they can help. But yeah, it will just depend uh, how many uh, local ones we will have and when they will have the chance to, to jump in and help. But I like Justin's idea that we can just have a CFP and then people can just propose like talks. Or if they want to be an organizer, they can just propose that there. So, so we I can also share that link over to different mailing lists. Sorry, my <laughs> no worries. Absolutely no worries. Um, and I kind of forgot what I was going to say. Somebody's question. Ash oh, I, th I was going to say, yeah, well, I was also going to say that for the CFP, I think it's going to be a little bit more of us explicitly inviting people that we know we want to talk. I think, I mean, some people, there'll be a few motivated individuals, <laughs> but I think like the local organizers should be thinking of people that that can talk to their local community, 
right? Yeah. So it's not necessarily that we're just expecting a bunch of things to come in per se. Um, but yes, a CFP would be a good way to do it. Um, I yes, <laughs> yes, I do. So, and then I think that for Ashlyn's question, I think that it's maybe a bigger conversation. So I think what we should do with this is add it into our notes and say that we need to explain or clarify a little bit the roles of what we are, you know, as the DNI team are doing with Fedora Women's Day, and then what the what we expect of like a local organizer, what we expect, what uh, you know, what they'll need, or et cetera, et cetera, from a local organizer. I think outlining that is important. So I'm just copying her um, the comment here, and I'm putting it in the notes. I'm not sure where at the bottom. Live notes. Okay. So I kind of want to try to just point out that we should stick to this. We should try to <laughs> stick to our agenda. Who is uh, maybe at the scratch goals um, under the call for federal women's the organizers. Because there is the article that Nasi wrote that uh, we can specify there, like what is the difference between the global organizers and local. Um, okay, so shall I just point out the next agenda point? Uh, right, so over here, like. I'm going into global organizing team responsibilities. The first point, feedback from organizers. I think from point A, B, C, D, they're all kind of, uh, they've been discussed. And I mean, if someone wants to point out anything else apart from these four points, then they can. I have a, I have a question. Yeah. People wanted less pictures. No, they wanted more pictures. So that's not clear. More picture, less text. So I think what you want to say is more pictures. Yeah, so usually what people end up doing is, let's say they have a slide and they have maybe three bullet points and a supporting picture. And those bullet points have text and they're like whole sentences. We want to do. And then what they end up doing is they, I mean, maybe because it's lack of them speaking at events or for whatever reason, they end up speaking, just looking at the entire slide and reading it through instead they could just talk around their slide and have an outline of text so that it is kind of becoming more interactive i guess i think that's a great suggestion but also it depends on the speaker uh because like we can give it as a suggestion to the speaker but yeah. it depends how is the way how they present yep yeah sure i mean that was something that we were just thinking about. It. But maybe we can keep this in mind, especially in the general slides that we wanted to, uh, hey Justin, that we wanted to, to do. Yeah, we should take a picture. Like right now? We have yeah. Three. yeah. Just a few minutes. I need to go prepare dinner for the family. Uh, so if we... Anybody else who is there in the session, please join us and please switch on your camera. Vipul, come on. Say, what no do pressure you mean, if you want to turn it off after. <laughs> yeah. Just we, only we have, have two, two more spots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Jump in. OK, I'll do the print screen. Wait, <laughs> on, th on count of three. Am I looking OK? <laughs> yes. <laughs> So smile. One, two, three. <laughs> Done. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I am Itan. I have to. I'll stay. Well, I'll stay I, for five, five, ten minutes. Yes, yeah, sorry. So I kind of wanted to see the Fesco thing, but I also feel like maybe I should stay here. This this might need my attention more than that. I'll probably watch that later, huh? Yeah. Okay. I think it's uh, a lot of nerds talking. Nerd. nerd yeah. talk. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take a quick bathroom break.
Cool. Yeah. Do we okay, want to take so, like a five minute break actually? Yes, then I'll Just take a leave. Thanks, okay. everybody. Is, is anyone with us? Thank you. Uh, Bye, Justin, Mida. I would say uh, maybe at 17 to meet again. It's not that much time, I know, but we have a lot of points to get. How about, how about we take five? So we'll give five minutes for everyone to do whatever they got to do. Um, so five after the hour, Bye, does that sound good? Bye, Regina. Uh, how many people are present right now? Like one, two, nine. I'm hoping just to know. And I there are people on the, the chat right. as well. Yeah, there's there were we earlier we had All 15 right. people. Now we have nine people. It looks yeah. like um, I'm going to go ahead and jump off minutes. just for a little bit. We'll be back in five minutes and then we'll work yeah. through the rest of the agenda. OK, cool. I'll be back. Like, yeah. Jonah, I think we kind of over, you know, overestimated <laughs> time. <laughs> time management was bad. I told you it would go like this. <laughs> uh but it's fine i think uh, uh regina said i like to have information before the next meeting uh about the uh, collaboration uh, or the date regina i think you can come you can come on this you can ask to share your video and text if you want okay yeah we can have uh, even a call maybe next week so we can speak again. Okay, she said she has questions about collaboration. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, um, what we can do after we finish when everyone comes back and we get uh, back to the agenda? If we don't finish all the things, we can have a call for uh, with the people that want to to help. Uh, so okay, yeah. yeah, like just going back to the agenda list, if you go to uh, the first point in, sorry, the F sub point, improve feedback form. I think so, we can do that later. Yeah, so we'll just put that in a ticket and then discuss it there. Yeah. yeah. That's bad. And the second, we kind of discussed about it. So maybe we can get to the third point. And search Hello, point. everyone. Hello. Hello. So I'm partially still at the chorus one. So I'm going to be here for the time now. My demonstration is done there. So um, I'm going to go to the agenda. Uh, Jonah, what about point three, metrics generation for the event? Yes, we will speak about this. Uh, we can wait also for Justin to come back because we can mention uh because this topic was discussed yesterday at the come up session yeah yeah yeah. i saw that okay yeah i'm just like sorting out whatever needs to be done right now after yeah i think this one is just a bit because they already spoke about it yesterday okay and what about this fourth organizers resource pack um uh, we can I'm not sure if it's here, but uh, the document that Justin also had, I think we can go through that. I will add the link there because I forgot that we had this. I think we should go to point six. What do you think about that? Uh, point six, yeah. Ah, yes, yes, yes. yes. Because we Marie, have I think, yeah. yeah, Marie, I think we need your help with point number six. Okay, hold on one second. Yeah. Putting in a, for the metrics one, I just put in a link there. Okay, um, point six. Yes. So hop in as a tool. Yes. <laughs> um, so for swag delivery, this is something that is definitely tough right now. I have <laughs> put together. I've hatched a plan and I've gathered all the swag to do a swag bag for Nest. So I guess I can report back on how it goes. But the problem is shipping things from one country to a different country. There's just a lot going on right now for that. Um, 
I think maybe we could do, so I'm looking down another avenue with swag, with OSPO in general, because this is something that uh, multiple community managers are coming up against. So we're trying to think of a process that will be um, a little bit easier on everyone. Oh my God, it's a dog. Hi dog. <laughs> um, so a little bit easier on us as community managers, not having to manage all the requests. And then a little bit easier because we've been asking our fulfillment team to help us with this. But they, um, you know, this is like a new, you know, it's, it would be a totally kind of new responsibility for them to take on. And they're not necessarily having that capacity. So something we've used in the past and something we use at Red Hat is something called the Cool Stuff Store. So basically, me with the Cool Stuff Store, it could work that they would do the shipping for us and we could give people credits mm -hmm. for the Cool Stuff Store. So I do like virtual handovers. That's an awesome idea too. We should put that in the doc. Um, virtual. Um, so I don't know the process for the cool stuff store has not been finalized. Like most things, it will take some time to get it going. Um, right credits at the red hat summit right so we could do something like that where we're giving people credits and then someone else is dealing with the shipping and the you know all of that stuff and then uh, we just pay the costs for that right yeah so that is an idea that's in the pipeline don't know if it'll be ready for for our women's day but if it was this would be a good option for us Okay, so like a question that Jonah and I had was that would we be doing swags for only the organizers or for the participants that will come to the local organizer events? Um, because usually previously we had uh, around $100 per event, the budget that we used to calculate. Did we send them swag as well or no? Or yes, that... also, but usually it was we just send it and stickers, pen, like the usual stuff. Right. Um, well, I honestly don't think that people are going to need much of a budget. So, like, for example, if we did the three day Fedora Women's Day event and then um, we got the registrant emails uh, from the registrations we would send them like a one-time link or like a here's your credit and then um you know like everyone could have you know be have enough to get like a sticker and a bag or something like that right yeah hold on Yes. Well, the thing about the cool stuff store is that they will like we can either give them designs and tell them what to be printing and selling to people. Or they can take uh, merchandise on consignment. So stuff that we already have, we can give to them. And then it, I mean, that's a bunch of paperwork and stuff for me to deal with. Um, not you guys, but like that's kind of how that would work. So whatever we had, we could put up there and it would kind of solve some problems. Um, we used to have a design for Federal Women's Day. I think we had it for t-shirts, but we never managed to print it. Right. So maybe we can use that design for... So the one know. thing to think about with t-shirts is that they are a bit bulkier and we would definitely... So, okay, another point about Cool Stuff Store. We would tell we would give them a design and say print this many of them we have to buy that merchandise back if it doesn't get sold so either way we're buying it when you're thinking about it's not something that's print on demand per item right so if we're buying all that we have to actually come up with like how many extra large shirts or double xl or do we want women's cut do we not so that's one of the reasons why i've avoided t-shirts 
for Nest. Actually, you guys want to see what I got printed. I hope what I about virtual handovers? Alexandra was talking about. Actually, I'm very curious now what Mary will show us. Uh, Justin, it was kind of a flower, I think, that the design team, I don't remember who exactly. So I guess my point was, I don't yeah. think that t-shirts are a good idea for, for the way that we're doing shipping and stuff like that right now. Mm -hmm. So this is the, it doesn't have this print on it, but I printed a bag like this mm -hmm. for Nest. And it has the Nest logo, and then on the other side, it just says Nest. So, I mean, this is something that anyone can find useful to put. I mean, we can find different stuff like this mm -hmm. um, that's not as bulky as a t-shirt yeah. and also doesn't have the same one-size-fits-all kind of a thing, right? Mm -hmm. I'd say we could do something like a scarf. That could be cute. Yeah, definitely. Because I think like uh, people already have a lot of t-shirts because of conferences. So maybe we can try to see what something else we can do. But I, I, I'm not sure. I don't remember the exact design where it is. I will try to find it later and okay. if we can use it. So for virtual handovers, uh, what did we what kind of stuff? What kind of ideas did we have? I mean, Alexandra pointed out about t-shirts, printing t-shirt patterns for themselves. Print yourself a thing. So basically, we could give, like, designs away. And this might be a tangent, but I remember in the ambassador world for a time, we had, um, like, a page, for, at least for North America, with all the shippers that we would had worked with to do great deals for Fedora stuff. Um, that could be also a way for folks to kind of work together with us. Like, I think it was one of the really unique decentralized kind of things that we've had in Fedora. Um, I don't know. I just always think about that would be one way of like working with local partners in those places, um, regional partners to help facilitate bulk, bulk order redu price reductions and yeah. Right. So something that we're doing like, so for Nets, for example, I have, like have all the stuff being sent to Raleigh and, you know, we'll figure out how many of the swag bags need to be sent for the folks in the U.S. versus this region versus that region. And they're going to be bulk sent from our fulfillment center to those other places. For example, we'll send a bunch of stuff to Brno office and they'll deal with the shipping in the European area, right? Right now, it is a little bit more difficult to get things into India. That's just a fact of how things are right now. So we we would like to do the same thing with uh, sending stuff to the Pune or Bangalore office, whichever one has more um, capacity to help with that. So, and then the, there's the one-off kind of things. Alexandra, what did you have to say? I just wanted to comment on that particular issue with uh, designers saying that uh, they cannot share designs because they will look different on different printers, so it's totally impossible. I think uh, we, we had this conversation like five or six years ago, and I think uh, I would like redo this conversation again because I think it's a wrong attitude or to, to these things so people who want swag they, they don't need a 100 percent ideal panton compatible uh, thing which will be like absolutely identical to what original designer thought they, they want some swag for fun and and uh, when designers block the whole initiative they, they really like not helping uh, when after the, that conversation, what I did personally, I just went to Fedora Wiki, took the SVG with Fedora splash image and went to my local store and printed the t-shirt. And it definitely it wasn't the exact Fedora color that designer wanted, but it was blue on white on black. And it was awesome t-shirt. It was like, I used it for 
two years on every event I went. So I'm totally like glad that I made it. But I did it against the design Fedora designer team because we said, oh no, it's not going to be this CMYK. We don't know where you printed. Like I don't care. I just need you know a certain simple so, enough design to share. Yeah, that's just a comment from previous experience. I appreciate that comment, Alexandra, because I think that because the resources are available and we have people who are um, crafty or like thinking thoughtfully enough to kind of just do things on their own, fine. I'm not going to go down and hunt those people down and be like, what are you doing with the trademark? But what I don't propose is that we promote that. <laughs> what I, I propose is that we promote um, like okay so you want to get swag sent to your uh your instead of getting a sense of fulfillment center i still want to pay for that for you i still would like to get it printed properly so instead of you taking the file i put the order in online and i have it shipped directly to you i mean that's that's another version another uh way that gets the swag into the hands of the contributor and then for people who are um, kind of, uh, what's the word, crafty enough to know their capabilities. Uh, they I, can I, understand, I understand your point, but it feels for me that we're like losing a lot of fun stuff we could make. Like, like imagine people doing their um, fun drawings, uh, like not the trademarks, trademark stuff it's it's like a parody stuff or i don't know there should be a name for this so if i'm doing a bracelet uh and i add some fedora logo on it like should i ask you to do this for me or is it my stuff which i'm going like i don't have it right now yet but uh like if if i do such a thing sitting at home doing nothing else but so we need a certain level like i'm what if we, for example, make it easier to approve the design uh, and say, I, I want to this picture, are you okay with this? And, and, and I go, but I don't want to wait for you to order for me the thing which I may be just making so it home. This is a great conversation for the design team. <laughs> um, so I just don't want to get this conversation too far off track um, for the for Fedora Women's Day. I think it's the, the issue of uh, people feeling like they can't get designs for what they need is a valid one. And I think that's definitely a good conversation to have. There is a IRC that you could go, there's a ticket repo. But so as far as it uh, relates to Fedora Women's Day, I think that we have some really cool graphics already for Fedora Women's Group and we can elaborate off of those um, to create some resources. Now, I'm not sure where exactly you're talking about virtual handovers, right? Um, so we could do something cool, like we could release something uh, at the Fedora Women's Day, like a set of stickers for Telegram. You know, you can make your own sticker t Telegram sticker pack. Yeah people who have done uh, a few already with Fedora, so. Right, it, it so we can do something like that, like this is the cool thing that's coming out for Fedora Women's Day, and it could be like some stylized, diverse set of ladies, you know, emoting different things, right? Um, just one idea of something cool that people might find interactive and keep them thinking about uh, the event long after it's happened. Um, anyway, does anyone else have things I've been talking? Yeah, I'm, I don't have any ideas, new ideas now, but I think we can I check it later we, again. Like, mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe for the short term, we can try it. We can check back in after Nest on how the shipment, swag shipments go on that. Yeah. And we can just follow. Right. As, I just have another idea. Ashlyn has an idea of Facebook profile cover images, which sounds cool. Another one I was thinking of was, oh gosh, it's just right out of my head. Hold on. You want to just add all oh, this? To well, the yeah, I'm, I'm adding it in now. Oh, I was thinking like, what about like phone wallpapers? 
Oh, that would be interesting. Right, like we could uh, we could ask the design team to adapt some of the wallpapers um, to phone backgrounds. Who would use I that? Use that. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fedora so wallpapers, phone. they're so cool. Right, uh, that could be a cool idea. So, is anybody another um, thing that we could do separately? I don't know what countries this is available in. Hold on one sec. But if you're aware of Redbubble. Yeah. Um, I, is that available in Europe? Uh, I think yes. I remember that I ordered something. But I and how about, and how about really... APAC? Uh, is it Redbubble? Yes. Mm -hmm. How about APAC? Also, I'm just going to take a second to shamelessly self-promote. <laughs> um, not sure we are. Just trying to see if I can buy something. I mean, yes, it, it does show. It's just that everything is in dollars. Probably and there'll be a problem with shipping because of the restrictions. All right, sorry, I got that, guys. All right, so here's this red bubble link. This is my shop for my artwork. But um, the cool thing about this is you can go in and design um, different types of things. So, like here, there's iPhone cases. Um, What's your posters, yeah. bags? This, so you do have to spend a little bit of time designing each item, but we could just include like a couple and we can set it so that we're not making any um, profit off of it. And we could potentially give people credit to the store as well. And this would be a way to do it on our own. I just don't know the availability of this globally. And also, like, we can give credits to people so they can uh, buy it and ship it to them. Right. So, uh, Tatika, the idea is for us to have to do less work as far as shipping and coordination of shipping. That's why we're talking about third-party, you know, print-on-demand options and swag options that are not us doing the shipments because it's just not as dependable right now. And it's a bit more expensive, but I'd rather, I'd rather have some kind of option. So with Redbubble, there's all kinds of products. Like we could do, you know, for Fedora Women's Day, we could have a cup and a, a mask. <laughs> I'm sure we found uh, some regional fabrics that can help with that. So the shippings are not that far away. So you have something that can cover South America and something that can cover Central America and something that can cover that's, North America, Europe, and Asia. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do for Nest. Oh, it's not listening. It's okay. <laughs> that is what I'm trying to, that is what I'm doing for Nest. And I'm doing that through the OSPO fulfillment team, right? But the thing, is I, I'm going to be the one who has to coordinate that. And I don't want to coordinate with local vendors across the world. What I want to do is have to coordinate with one place. And that would be the Cool Stuff Store, which I, Marie, Tatika, we talked about before you came on, or something like Redbubble. Um, so I, I'm not trying to coordinate things all over the place with different vendors and coordination, but this just sounds like a nightmare. Sounds like my old job. Do. People, people from each community can do that. That's that's how it has been done in the past. Those who that, are kind of interest can help. No, doesn't work. I just have think it's customer? something that I would prefer to just have it set up so that local organizers can worry about things like content for their events versus logistics around swag. I don't know. Am I? Yeah, I'm just I'm just worried because. Uh, of course, I'm always going to worry about South and Central America. So yeah, it, it, it seems 
it seems doable for Europe and, uh, and so North are, America. But I can, I can just do a research in here. Do you have access to Redbubble? Uh, I'm checking. Here, check this but, out. Yeah, I'm just checking if they have something local. But, Here's a link you can try. Yeah. Yeah. I think I joined in the perfect moment. <laughs> Late, but in the perfect moment. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just put a link in the the chat. I'm curious yeah, if you're yeah, able to that. if you're able to order from that or not. Yeah, I'm just at least it shows an idea uh, that we can currency. I guess. Maybe well, for me it will not be a problem because I, the... I can order because I have an American account. So okay. the thing uh, is, it's shipping. Okay, so Justin, what were you going to say? Um, I was just going to say, maybe we could, just so we can get through some of the other parts of the agenda, because we're still going to talk about metrics. And I also want to make sure we talk a little bit about what funding looks like for organizers this year. Um, I think we should come back to this topic once we have feedback from how Nest goes, but maybe a path forward will be as far so as I, the centralization of swag. I think there's a point and so maybe in some uniques. The budget oh, really sorry, does have a, to do with the, yeah, the budget does have to do with the swag though, because yeah. we're looking now at shipping costs, like different kinds of shipping costs than we were before. I think, I think that was what Alexandra's idea was about the virtual handovers is I think that idea of the central production of swag, which might, will probably work really well for North America and the MIA is, is fine, but um, we might want to be open-minded in some cases that some local organizers are going to be able to work faster and quicker and still follow best practices for design by working with local partners. So you that shipping and logistics piece, but we'll just have to, there, there would be a paperwork piece there. But I think it would be something that if it makes sense for most people who are proposing events. And I think it's just a good way that we can keep it open as an option in the cases where that might actually be the better or more easier option for the local organizer. Right. But I don't so want to go that, too off. No, no, you, I think there's ways we can No, I totally agree. Right. I think it's going to just provide a little bit of limitation as far as what they can do because, uh, and that's fine. It's better than nothing. And what I mean by that is they're not going to be able to print five different stickers, 30 a piece, because that's going to cost a lot. You know, they're going to have to be able to print one sticker a hundred of them for however much. So there's just, there's gonna be less options, but I say we should be able to provide that support if people wanna do it and need to do it. I think if we're transparent about it and people know, then that's perfect. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm gonna refresh really quick because the chat crashed for me and it says I have to refresh, so. Okay. to point number three then yes but we need justin back because uh, <laughs> <his point. laughs> that's funny or b maybe b i'm still here yeah just so, listening to all that discussion <laughs> the third point is about the metrics and it was something that uh you uh, were speaking yesterday at the come up session, so maybe you can uh, share also here what it was discussed. Uh, yes, so basically, uh, we want in come up, we were discussing that it would be nice to have some DNI related metrics. So we were thinking, like, one thing which we could do right immediately was that we could just uh, plot all the different, like, Fedora Women's Day events. Uh, which took place over like the a map of all the globe but like in the future we also want like not just this information like how many organizers were from which country or which location but also like uh, the attendees hopefully so we were thinking that if we have one platform like hopin we can just that we will have some uh, email IDs of all the attendees. So we can either send them a link to create like a fast account and get like a Women's Day badge, 
or like still keep in touch with them after or you can just create some like fun polls like we did now for nest in the uh, hop in uh, yeah, side yeah. and then like have some quick uh, metrics like how many are comfortable with english or how many need like some different language events or like what event what talk they enjoyed the most so we can get a better idea of what area uh, that in these are looking for and so on so I think the poll function in Hopin is really fun for this. Mm. Um, the one thing about it is I shouldn't, maybe shouldn't tell a whole room of people this, but like you can go to a different browser and double vote <laughs> or like refresh your browser. Like you can find out ways to double vote. So like, mm -hmm. is it entirely accurate? No, but it gives us a good sense. I do like the fact that it's like, completely anonymous like I yeah um, so what I what did I want to show you oh I wanted to show you guys just the back end of this for like a second you guys want to see that um, here hold on a second so like here's some of the stuff like you can actually see we didn't charge anybody 490 registrations um, you can see registrations by country and visitors by country, which is cool. But you can also see that people are using VPNs and various other things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you can see what uh, people are using, uh, what device operating system. Okay. Um, so that's interesting. And then there's... I think there's some more stuff over here. Curious. So you have like a poll summary in the back, and it actually sent me an email with the poll summary from yesterday. So you have that back there too. Um, so this is kind of, you have stage summary, so it gives you all your videos. Um, you can email attendees through here. I have just chosen not to do do that besides the standard ones they send. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff with this. So I guess my point is uh, we should be able to fulfill a lot of the ideas that you guys have mm -hmm. uh, with some of these tools. And um, another thing, you know, we're talking about surveys in general or just for with regards to fedora women's day or metrics in general or just in regards to fedora women's day so i have one question i'm not sure if we discussed this i know we were discussing this before but i'm not sure if we reached a conclusion so will we use like one hop in uh, instance for all the events or different different ones we will right. use but it depends on the organizers in case they want to use another tool which also uh, reminds me that we need to make sure that the, the, the metrics that we want to get mm -hmm. we should ask the organizers to get from the other platform so yeah. for example I don't know if they will use um, Google Hangouts or whatever other tool we should know like how many people they will have countries some kind of metrics yeah but they I should guess. use something for like event registration so to have like just who like some kind mm -hmm. of free registration even though the ticket is free like so we have at least oh, yes. many of that in mind or something to contact them after because we had this problem that we need uh, some way to contact that and these after the event as well and to keep in touch Uh, yeah. I'm not Questions sure. Questions on how to like, define a metric strategy for Federal Women's Day going virtual this year. Like maybe it would help if we focus, like what are the one or two things we want to learn from Federal Women's Day 2020? And we can try to some extent to build around that, um, at least in terms of what metrics we can build or collect. Um, so there might be a place to start. Like probably a Fedora badge would be a good place to start for attendees and maybe organizers too 
um because that was one thing that came up this year was like who who organized them in 2017 and 2018 and we were trying to dig to find all that so maybe all that. doing so, two batches one for organizer one for attendee would be a good place to start for an action item on that. i'm not against it we've tried to shy away from doing like organizer and speaker badges for some things but i think you know it does give incentive for people to it does gotta, give incentive. Gotta validate that. <laughs> yeah, I'm down for that. Um, so, Jessica. Oh. oh, I was just saying, Katika, I saw your message there in the chat, and yeah, that's too expensive. So, the problem with. The problem with that is then who is doing, so like Katika, if you went and got those shipped or got those printed, then you would have whatever, 500 of them or something. Then what would you do with them? You would ship them individually? That's what I have been doing for the past 15 years. So. And is that's that how I mostly usually work in Latin America. It's just that I had to take my maternity leave and I had to stop. But that was how we usually did it here. Right, educate me. I don't know. <laughs> well, the usual thing in Latin America was that I went to a conference, got my suitcase full of goodies and swag, and then I locally distributed to different countries. So it was the same for Central America, uh, but then it was Neville Prof. Uh, he's from Nicaragua. Uh, and uh, for the moment <laughs> of South America, we had a guy from uh, Argentina who did uh, Argentina, Peru, um, uh, Chile, uh, and the rest of the world. That's it. Being a mom. <laughs> Oh. Now that I'm not in Venezuela, uh, for me, shipping is way easier. I actually just did a, a really small walk uh, by the new neighborhood that I am. And I have a DHL and a local shipping and a post office. And I have several things that I, was, I didn't have back at home. So having those international shippings is good. Also, my local uh, North American courier is in this city, and I usually take only one week from uh, Miami to to put uh, the goodies in here in my house. So things have changed drastically for me in the past ten days, and I hope that this kind of changes also help me to uh, not just to produce locally because here the prices are really great. Uh, the one that I show you is one. This is my kids' one. But this was uh, less than $2. Uh, and then I could use the rest of the money, which is going to be less, to distribute. I'm not thinking on huge books because currently we know that we have to uh, grow Latin America again. Uh, there was a, a huge burnout and all of that, but that's another topic. But we can start as we started up, you know, 10 years ago. Small uh, packages. I can contact uh, different countries, vendors, so I can make sure that they do the things like, like we should do the things. So joining that with the with the surveys and all of that, I mean, the more information we have, then the better packages we can build, either physical or digital. So yeah, that's, and I think that's, actually that's um, we're not going to talk like, about that. No, for example, in the Czech Republic, I know because uh, I speak with Dorka on some frequency that like for them uh, printing and shipping locally is like way cheaper than doing some kind of online service. So I think this, this country, particularly in Colombia, is uh, when you talk about prices, it's like the China for Europe. So this is right. probably the, the cheapest country because they're just in the middle of the continent. So it's easier to ship to Central America and to South America. So that's an advantage. But again, we, we don't have to cover that topic because that's what I want to focus on the 1 p.m. Right. talk. But, but you now you know that there is, the, there is the, the idea there and there is the option for the Latin American guys who, who is a really different, uh, you know, issue. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, for me, it's just a matter of, yeah, like time versus, <laughs> like effort versus, like if you're willing to head that up, that seems great, right? Um, I think it's just a, a local a person by person situation that we're gonna have to handle. But if we're, to, if we're like bringing the conversation back around to budget and how that has to do with swag, I think this is pretty tough to understand all of the costs that might go into something like, you know, swag is probably one of the biggest um, points of the budget for online virtual events, or it would go towards something like doing a virtual activity online, like a game or something like that. Some of them do cost just a little bit of money. I actually I'm going to to both because so, First, you need to, you need to, uh, I mean, it's not, it, the, the way that we used to do that is that. What are we first, talking about? Oh, the virtual uh, packages and the physical packages, didn't you say that? Uh, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm just talking about uh, budget and that I was thinking we should just go with the same dollar amount. Ah. The, the hundred dollar yeah. budget and oh. see how that does. I mean, if we, yeah. if we get, say we get 12, um, you know, different Fedora Women's Day signing up for that event, then we have $1,200 to work with, which is pretty good. Uh, that would probably be too much, <laughs> but yeah. I mean, uh, I spent $12 to make 10, 10 mask covers. Yeah. So maybe we can start doing small packages for the organizers of this uh, women event, even if they're held virtually, and something that is small and can be shipped through regular post. And if we send that three or four weeks prior, because there is no need to send that, you know, two or three days before, then they can have it for the virtual conference as well. So as far as hop-in costs, there is a cost a lot like a larger dollar amount that will go on to the flock budget but then as we continue there are uh, for each event there i'm pretty sure there are registration fees but i believe that the the um sorry the the program that we went with or the deal package we went with it was like a dollar per registration and then every admin you don't like do on top it's another 10 cents per registration so i'm i like i said i'm not sure about how many admin slots i'm not the one in control of all of the negotiations there are people to be considered that have different needs than our community so we're getting it for a bit cheaper but we are sharing the service right so those are the kinds of things we have to keep in account I don't think it's going to be very costly. Like say we have 300 registrants. I think we're looking at like three to $400 for hopping. I, I hope not. And honestly, I think that for like the hopping accounts, well, we'll see how it works out. I actually have this is a bigger conversation that's now playing out in my brain that none of you need to be a part of, but it has to do with the power. We're going to talk about it in the afternoon, so don't worry. Yeah. There's just some bits of metrics and what what can we do to inspire more female to not just join the conference, but contribute. I think that will be the main point here. For me, the main reason to be to the Fedora Woman uh, group is one to kind of feel understand, understood, understand something like that, because I'm a mom, and usually uh, not everyone, but it's a it's a it's a reality that when my kid jumps on top of me, everybody's like, oh, eh, she's not gonna talk. But that happens. It's life. Uh, and the other thing is uh, we have different uh, schedules that we have to meet as female especially the ones are, that are our moms. Uh, and this group should be to, 
Ya, water, water. Mira, dígale papá que le da agua naranja. Uh, <laughs> and also to seek inspiration. Because uh, if we see a lot of women that can cope with uh, university, because I know that Jonah is into that, she uh, can cope with work, can cope with family, either if it's just relatives or uh, uh, partner, kids, uh, pets, because we are kids too, uh, and we can actually thrive on it. I think that's way more interesting than, than having a technical conference for me because a technical conference can come from different sizes. It's more about how as a female can you grow into the technical world and still be a female. Not be considered, hey, I thought you were a guy. It's just what you usually get when you're in a chat with us, your face on. So something that would be cool for me, to, some piece of information that would be interesting for me to have is like what can Fedora do better? What can open source communities do better uh, to be more inclusive towards women? So I don't know if we're talking about like an open feedback session or uh, some different polls like we come up with a variety of polls on that topic and we put them through in the chat and you know get some feedback on something like what could we do what could we do better in this aspect what could we do better in that aspect unfortunately with that we can't do write-ins but justin i did see you know you said something in a channel and we do have an option for something called lime survey so lime survey is something that i've been a service that i've been looking into and have now signed up for an account on to do a couple things. So one of the things is to support CPE in their community happiness initiative. Um, and then another one is, well, we're using it for lightning talks. Hold on one sec. I have something that I wanted to do for the council. We're gonna have another use for it as well. So a Lyme survey is definitely something we can be using. Um, it isn't like it doesn't have like a front facing interface like i can't set up a survey through our account like i don't know Vipple would have to get on and explain how it works but i'm pretty sure we have our own instance and do this and that i'm not like yeah i don't know all the information behind that but the idea there is like we can't collect identifying information so we can't collect like, you know, are you a woman? Are you, you know, straight, gay, bi? Like, are, what race are you? Like, we can't do those kinds of things, but we can ask people questions about Fedora Women's Day. We can ask people questions about diversity and how they think we could do better. So I think that we can still like, I talked to a lawyer within Red Hat Legal and I was like, oh, surveys, what's the deal with surveys? You know, my predecessor, or, you know, we ran up to this issue in the past and I was like, do we need to like run these things by legal or whatever? And she's like, what? If we had to look at every single survey that Red Hatters placed, like that's all we'd be doing. And I was like, okay, fair. And I was like, well, what's the general ground, like framework of how we can do this? And she was like, just don't be collecting per personal information. So, I think as long as we don't do that, we won't run into a situation where someone would give us a GDPR request. And then if it, on the off chance it would happen, what we would do is I would take that request to legal and I would have Vipple remove it from our instance and issue the Red Hat standard response to them that it has been removed. Now, I can't imagine us like, since we're going about it very decisively that we would choose to collect personal data. But if say we did by accident or say someone was just like, I consider that personal and I want it removed. We're just gonna remove it. We're not gonna fight with them. We're just gonna just remove it and be fine with that. All right, so this is kind of Red Hat's stance on it as from, from my understanding and what I am like working on, right? So I did, I got the line survey account. 
and I am the one who is like basically figuring out what's going to go on there or not. And I do want to outline a separate gnosis. I want to outline a process for other folks on how to use that outside of just DNI or Mindshare, et cetera, et cetera. But I would like it to be a little bit more widely known. The one thing is I don't want it to be used for just whatever. So there should be some kind of standard of like, you know, what, what can be used there. Anyway, a point about surveys and how we can use them to figure out some of the most important things we need back or we want to know about improving uh, the situation or what people think we did, we're doing well already, et cetera, et cetera. So I, uh, I, what do you mean when we have some like standards for what is an event? I think it was something you were saying, right, Mari? I I cannot hear you. I think I muted myself. <laughs> standards for what can go on the Lyme survey. Yeah. Uh, I just mean that, like, it shouldn't, it's not it's something we're going to give access to everyone. Mm -hmm. It's something that we're going to, you know, it's not just like, oh, just randomly do, like, a fun little survey. Like, Vipple has to go in and set it all up, et cetera, et cetera. It's work for people. So when I say there's a standard, I just mean, like, it's just not, like, a thing we're just going to use for anyone. Just, like, any time we do with, like, I'm pretty sure it's going to run through Mindshare. So same way like people would do a swag request or any other thing, we could have them submit a request to do a survey and we would work with them, talk with them, figure out, you know, buff up the idea just like we do for other things with Mindshare. That's probably what the process is gonna look like. Does that make more sense? Yes, yes. Okay. B, does that make more sense? Um, yes, it does. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um but so I'm not sure about like how we can collect like more information through these like common surveys. Uh, like, do we just ask them uh, like what some feedback about different teams? But then like it might be too much, right? If someone is just requesting well, a swag and we have, okay. we have anyone looked at the CPE survey? Has anyone done it? Mm -hmm. I have. <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? The CPE survey? No. Can you share the link? Hold on. Oh, we are at time. Oh. It's okay. Do, do, do. But something really quick that I think is really relevant to Thor. We didn't get a chance to talk about. Um, I was just going to highlight the what rights can has done for their for their virtual events this year with their connectivity fund um let me drop a link to that in the chat um so what they're doing is for their speakers and people who are presenting they can actually apply for things like um internet top-up packages and headsets like wireless microphone or, or like headsets and microphones for being able to participate on equal footing with people who may already have access to these things or, or better access to these things. Um, so I thought this was possibly a really interesting thing we could make available in the CFP process as we get ready to start accepting proposals for possibly regional events or specific sessions and the three day, however we do it with Hopin, um, or with maybe the people who are who are going to present topics, um, who go if we do a CFP for doing talks as well. Um, which that's something I, I'm willing to take on just because it's really just messing around with the Pagora repo for the templates. And if I can just get feedback on how to write that stuff, that would be great. But I just wanted to highlight this connectivity fund as this really unique COVID-19 post or, or mid pandemic way of trying to support people who may have a different, especially folks who like, we've always had a strong showing of folks in LATAM and APAC and places that have varying 
stories about internet connectivity. So I think it'd be great to continue supporting those people. And if this is one way that makes organizing a Fedora Women's Day more accessible, I'd, I'd love to do it. I just, yeah, I see B's comment. I just don't know. I, I saw this conversation in a MozFest Slack because someone was struggling. Another person was trying to organize a virtual event and was like, how do we do this? Like, I'm really, like, people are asking me for this and I don't know how to handle these requests. How do people, how are people handling this? And the feedback in that thread was, um, was, was the RightsCon thread, but also just saying that for, like, as far as where to cap it, doing it for org. willing to experiment for this time because no one's really done this before like i don't know it's just hard because attendees like well maybe that's five people and if it was five people then that's fine but if it's 500 people then it's like oh shoot we we said we were going to do this like 50 up to 50 dollar packages but that was before like i think we'd have to set up we'd have to set a capacity somewhere just to make sure that we don't bite off more than we can chew, especially as we're waiting for um, updated budget numbers, or I don't know how that's going to play into this either. Um, but just a thought on my side, like I, I'm really plus one to organizers and presenters. I just, I don't know about attendees. I'm, I'm open to discussing other ideas, but I'm just worried that, um, you know, if we get few requests, it's fine. But if we get a lot, we might have to let people. It might we might have to turn people down, and that's never a fun thing to do. <laughs> to tell people, actually, we can't give you support. Sorry. Anyways, I could open a new ticket for that, given that we are out of time. Just to, on that specific conversation, I also want to open a new ticket for um, the gnome collaboration since we didn't get a ton of time to talk about it um but i know there's folks who are in the gnome community who i'm going to follow up with to um, so I'm, I'm in the process of opening two tickets for i want to make a point one for the gnome oh go ahead go yeah. ahead no no go ahead. So i was saying i'm going to open two tickets for Federal women's day one on um we'll call it connectivity fund or sponsoring attendees like we'll figure out the details one for that and then one for the specifically the gnome collaboration like it'd be great to collaborate with other communities but maybe since we're coming up on the line with for this and we know we have folks in gnome who are ready to jump on and help with this we can just start with gnome plus fedora women's day start with that and figure those details out so i'm gonna open those two tickets cool um I'm going to jump off the call. I'm getting a bunch of questions here in the chat I'm trying to answer. And then I have to go do a lightning talk. So I'm out of here for now. I feel like we're getting close to the end of the time anyway. Or over. I think we are over, yeah. For me, it would be a good place to pause so I can take time to type tickets and get that work okay. done before I get pulled into the next nest thing. So for me, I, I think this is a good stopping point and we can try to really focus the discussion. Like this was helpful for me just to kind of get an idea of where we can focus for Fedora Women's Day, even if we get through all of the agenda, like we never do anyways, even at Flock, so like whatever. <laughs> um, right. But um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna open those, those tickets for Fedora Women's Day and let's try to drive the conversation in the tickets. Okay, sounds good to me.